before there was Casey and Jojo, there was Jodeci. And before Jodeci, there was Little Cedric and the Haley Singers. Monroe, North Carolina natives Cedric Casey Haley and his younger brother Joel Jojo Haley came together with several others to form a gospel singing group stemming from their experience growing up and singing in church. Participation in music was a foregone conclusion for the siblings. After all, their parents were gospel singers. The brothers' musical influences ran the gamut from traditional gospel such as Shirley Caesar to genre-extending gospel artists like the Winans. KC, or Little Cedric as he was referred to back then, was also affectionately dubbed the Michael Jackson of gospel. The group released three albums during the mid-80s. The first, I'm All Right Now, failed to chart, but the next two, Jesus Saves and God's Blessings, did. Then, after meeting through a mutual acquaintance, the brothers decided to break away from their group and join forces with another set of brothers. The foursome would go on to take the secular music world by storm and rise all the way to the top of the charts. In 1989, KC and Jojo, along with Donald Devante Swing DeGreat and Dalvin Mr. Dalvin DeGreat, came together to form the R&B group Jodeci. With demo tape in hand, the new group set their sights on a fledgling recording company founded by Andre Harrell that went by the name of Uptown Records. A deal was soon secured, and not long after that, the bad boys of R&B were born. Between 1991 and 1995, Jodeci released three multi-platinum selling albums and achieved numerous top 40 hits. At this exciting time in their career, KC was also experiencing an exciting time in his personal life when he embarked on a relationship with another R&B singer whose career was, just like his, on the upswing. KC and the future queen of hip-hop soul, Mary J. Blige, would go on to have a decade-plus long relationship beginning in the 90s and extending into the early 2000s. The relationship, though, was, quote, dark and abusive, at least according to Mary, as she detailed in her 2021 documentary, My Life, and eventually culminated in her very public humiliation the day she announced their engagement, only for KC to deny they were even involved. Jody C were on the show uh, earlier on in the series, and uh, Terry asked KC this question. Have a look at this. Uh, you're going to break a few hearts because uh, I've heard that you, you're going to marry Mary J. Blige, aren't you? No! 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 That's a rumor for the states too, you know. Casey is not getting married. Now, is it, was he being super cool or what? Are you getting married? No, we're not getting married. I was just going to say, I'm very glad no, to hear that, married. <laughs> we're not getting married now. No married now? No. So there's no huge engagement ring? Oh, yeah, yeah, whatever. Let's whatever. move on, please. Okay, I'm but now... When Jodeci went on hiatus, the Haley brothers decided to forge ahead as a duo and continue to perform and record as KC and JoJo. It was actually KC on his own that came out of the gate first when he covered Bobby Womack's hit, If You Think You're Lonely Now, for the 1994 romantic drama film, Jason's Lyric. Another movie soundtrack effort followed in 96, when the brothers teamed up for the song, How Could You, for Bulletproof. That same year, Casey and Jojo would have their first high profile appearance as a duo and their first experience at the top of the charts as featured guest artists on Tupac's R&B and Billboard Hot 100 hit, How Do You Want It? Many years later, the duo would reminisce about how it all came together. The brothers were down with death row at the time, so one night they went to the studio where Tupac was and sat in on his recording session. He had Casey and Jojo listen to what he had so far, and well, according to them, Tupac sounded crazy. He was singing the lyrics in his signature thugged out way, and it just wasn't working. So he asked Casey and Jojo if they could do it. They agreed, but did it their way. Little did they know that they'd end up playing a major role in the track becoming a number one hit. Love Always, the brothers' first album as a duo, dropped in June 1997. It spawned the singles You Bring Me Up, Last Night's Letter, Don't Rush, Take Love Slowly, and their number one international hit, All My Life, written by Jojo for his daughter, Kayla Tiffany. It was the number one song on the Hot 100 for three weeks, a feat that Casey and Jojo had never achieved with Jodeci. The song remains the duo's only number one hit, by far the song they're most widely known for, and no doubt, one of the most popular wedding songs ever. 
During the recording of Love Always, Casey and JoJo also appeared on the song, I Care About You, as a member of the one-off R&B supergroup, Milestone, which appeared on the soundtrack for the 1997 comedy drama film, Soul Food. A couple of years later, the duo put their stamp on yet another movie soundtrack with the song, Life, from the 1999 comedy drama film of the same name. Casey and JoJo's second studio album, It's Real, was released in the summer of 99. Four singles were released, including the number two Hot 100 hit, Tell Me It's Real. The duo returned with X at the end of 2000. The lead single, Crazy, also included on the Say The Last Dance soundtrack, put them back on the Hot 100 chart when the song just missed the top 10, peaking at the number 11 position. Over the years, especially during the Jodeci era, KC was never shy about showing off his chest and abs at any given moment. However, in December 2000, he showed a little bit too much when he allegedly displayed his genitals on stage. Eventually, he was charged with 23 counts of indecent exposure and one count of lewd conduct. KC vehemently denied all accusations. Several months later, he was sentenced to two years probation and ordered to pay nearly $1,000 in penalties. The fourth KC and JoJo album, Emotional, was released in November 2002, but failed to acquire any commercial success. In between projects, it seems that the brothers always had time to get into some sort of trouble. In 2003, both KC and JoJo were arrested on tax evasion charges, related to shows the duo performed between 1999 and 2001. Their lawyer insisted that neither was aware they owed the money because, as artists, they don't handle their own affairs, and them having changed accountants was most likely the reason for the issue. In late 2006, KC became the first out of the duo to release his debut solo album titled My Book. Several years later, the brothers decided to give reality TV a shot and starred in their own docuseries called KC and JoJo Come Clean. The series showcased their current struggles with alcohol as they worked to rebuild their relationship and make a comeback. After more than a decade, KC and JoJo released their fifth album as a duo titled My Brother's Keeper in 2013. Building off that momentum, Jodeci made a surprise appearance reuniting the following year at the Soul Train Awards. They blew the crowd away, lip-syncing several of their popular hits. In a written statement to Yahoo Music, the group explained their decision to reunite the way they did. Soul Train was a critical platform in the beginning of our career, so it only makes sense that our return to the stage be during the Soul Train Awards 2014. We're humbled by the loyalty of our fans who have asked for a Jodeci reunion and look forward to giving them a show as only Jodeci can. Hashtag Jodeci forever. JoJo kicked off the start of a new decade by taking the solo route for the first time in his career. He released the track Special on Valentine's Day 2020. The song also came out on his own label, JT Entertainment, that he shares with his wife, Tashonda. While doing numerous interviews to promote his work, he also went into detail about how he's currently doing with his alcohol addiction. He's been to rehab three times and can proudly say he's sober and been sober for quite some time. Big Brother KC also released a new solo single that year called Jesus Saves. In interviews, he explains that he didn't want to come out with the typical ballad that fans would expect without first telling his testimony about how his life was saved. He told You Know I Got Soul.com in August 2020 that he had an illness, which he doesn't name, that either he nor his doctors thought he would survive. During the worldwide pandemic, the Haley brothers and the DeGrate brothers started reaching out to each other and began talking about reuniting. Their talks eventually resulted in an official reunion in 2022, beginning with the group signing a brand new management deal, as well as their guest appearance on New Edition's The Culture Tour. During the summer of 22, Jodeci, along with Lil' Kim, The Locks, Busta Rhymes, and more, took to the stage to show their former mentor, Diddy, some love, performing their hit, Come and Talk to Me, during his Lifetime Achievement musical tribute. And even in the midst of all the work they've been doing with Jodeci, KC still managed to secure his first solo number one on the adult R&B chart for his participation on Charlie Wilson's No Stoppin' Us, also featuring Babyface and Johnny Gill. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and comment. Also, don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications so you won't miss any future videos. See you next time.